Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwanten and welcome to Selling Power's Daily Report. Today we continue our conversation with Dr. Kerry Salkowitz, who's a psychoanalyst and also the founder and CEO of the Boswell Group. Welcome, Kerry. Thanks, Gerhard. I looked at your website and you have a program called, uh, or a service called Strategic Psychological Intelligence. And uh, you list very, very interesting examples. Can you tell us how you uh, developed this? Sure, I'd be happy to. Strategic psychological intelligence, which I realize is a mouthful, so I, I sometimes abbreviate it as SPI, but really it's a fancy uh, few words that describe a really simple idea. It's an attempt to uh, help my clients, who tend to be CEOs of public companies, with high-stakes negotiations. It's a form of allowing them to get into the mind of the person sitting across the negotiating table from them, and that gives them an edge in negotiations. And by the way, in my mind, a negotiation process often begins not with the formal sitting across the table and trying to hammer out an agreement. It really begins with the very first contact with the potential target. And it draws on something from my old days, my, my former life, if you will, as a, as a clinical psychiatrist and psychoanalyst when I was seeing patients all day. And that is, if you were my patient, Gerhard, uh, and I'd meet with you on a regular basis, and let's say you talk to me about your wife. Well, I most likely would never meet your wife, but in talking to you about her day in and day out, we would come up together with a, a kind of working psychological portrait of her, which hopefully would help you relate better to her at home. That's the simple idea, and mm -hmm. essentially in strategic psychological intelligence, I'm doing the same thing with my CEOs and their targets in negotiations. I would call it customer mind mapping. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll consider that. Okay. <laughs> so give me an example where, uh, in a high-stakes situation, where you have been able to uh, extract some of those uh, clues and, and reconstruct a profile from that. Sure. Well, it, it's partly about extracting clues about the mind of the other person, but frankly, it's just as much about making sure that my clients, the, my, my CEOs, um, don't always follow their intuition because sometimes following their intuition can actually lead them down the wrong path with a given uh, customer or, or, or target. Uh, to give you an example, um, if you have a, a target, a potential customer, who has a, um, a very self-involved, uh, somewhat grand view of themselves, and uh, they tend not to be good listeners, um, they can be very frustrating people to deal with. I'm sure. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Right. They, they can be difficult people, and uh, and and sometimes my clients, my CEOs, can get annoyed with that, and their annoyance can show, and uh, in fact, they can even uh, try to put the other uh, CEO, the target, in his or her place. Um, now that may be emotionally satisfying in the moment, but if you're trying to acquire that person's company, it's a really bad idea. It's, it does not build a relationship, it builds walls. It builds walls, and that's the last thing you want to do. You want the walls to come down. So, so understanding how those narcissistic aspects of the target CEO operate may give me, and therefore my client, uh, some clues as to how to, without giving away anything, appeal to the, uh, the, the self-regard of the target in such a way that they sort of loosen up and open up and make them a more, uh, a more easy person to negotiate with. How do you create the profile of somebody that you never see? Uh, do you have sort of a, a questionnaire that you, you go through with people to help them understand how the opponent operates? That's, no, we don't. That's, that's the distinctive part of it, and that's really what, what makes this a, a, a real application of a psychoanalytic methodology. What I mean by that is that I don't have to meet, I, the consultant, don't have to meet the, the target myself. Right. My, my client meets the target, and they come back and they report to me about their interactions, whether it's you know, over lunch or golf course or in the lawyer's office. And, um, uh, and you might wonder, well, but aren't those reports, those descriptions of those interactions going to be biased and incomplete and uh, uh, you know, not objective? And of course, you're right, they're not objective, but they don't have to be. And that's really the trick to this. So you're getting to the source code of the other person. That's right. And then you use that source, and in, in, in your uh, previous example, you, you talked about uh, the narcissistic uh, profile. Yeah. Where uh, in, a, in an acquisition or in a big negotiation, there's a lot of ego involved. There is, there is, and, and you have to appeal to that in a, in a certain way, rather than try to fight it or, or, or get the ego to submit. 
Thank you, Carrie, for sharing those wonderful insights. And we are going to continue our conversation with Dr. Carrie Salkovitz tomorrow, where we talk about the key factors that lead to a better corporate culture. Mm -hmm.